And if you see in 2004, there is ICT at school and NME ICT. ICT at school is for school teachers, school education, and NME ICT is for higher education. So in 2004, they launched this two, ICT at school scheme and NME ICT. So all digital initiatives of school education will be under ICT at school scheme. And uh, all the digital initiatives of higher education was taken, funded under NME ICT. So this EPG Patshala, which is in 2015, which was launched, was courses, online courses for PG level. So many teachers would have joined as primary school teacher or everyone. So, but if they wanted to do some higher education, they want to do MED, but they are not able to, they are in the school system already, they'll be able to do. So similarly in all sectors, like many people would have completed BE and joined in engineering. Some work. They want to continue their education. There was no scope. So this particular EPG Parshala was to encourage higher studies for people who wanted to continue and continue their studies, who's in the job. So that's how for that purpose this was launched. And in 2018, this EPG Parshala was restructured. Why only PG courses? There are still people who are not able to continue their UG itself. They are getting dropped out, joining for job. There are many others who wanted to learn multiple things. Like I am I am a person who is interested in art, but I joined my, in mathematics. So once I join mathematics, I'm not getting opportunity. All allied subjects will be computer science, physics. No art subjects was there at that time. So I'm not able to learn something which interests me. So if somebody wants to learn extra, like photography, I want to learn. So that that is where the EPG Patshala was restructured as called as Swayam Move. Swayam was a portal which stands for uh, study webs of, sorry, <clears throat> uh, for the, Swayam, we will be going in detail in the next session, but it is basically Swayam as a portal and an app for students and teachers. It's like a public, it's an open a platform where massive open online courses are conducted, but it is also having a credit when it is a regular studies. For example, if a child is studying a BSc mathematics, for example, in a college, if the university has accepted, like they select and accept courses. So the student can go and study online and that will be credited into their regular course. Till today, in higher education, this is happening. So we are not very long, we need not wait long to get this into school education because for school education, already it policy is recommended, discussions has been initiated. So shortly this, this system will come for schools also. When we do not know, but anytime it may come into school system where our children may study some courses in online and we may need to take that into a credit of our regular school. So that is a kind of a MOOCs uh, platform that was initiated and they also initiated a DTH TV channel because everyone don't have internet right all the students do not have internet where they can use only the Swayam portal and use it so what they did is like they also brought up the Swayam Prabha TV DTH TV channel which was like in the Swayam Prabha we had 12 DTH channel for ourselves like for school education Swayam Prabha is for everyone, higher education, school education, but it was a TV channel initiator. And also the Diksha platform was also launched. So for school education, we wanted one platform where we can provide the textbook content, everything. Uh, in detail about these initiators, we will be um, going through later. After 2017, earlier, like if you see for the primary, there was SSA and for the higher education, there was RMS. Right. So then they combined both in 2018 as Samagraga Siksha. Samagraga Siksha is like a kind of a, uh, integrated um, from initiative from, from kindergarten to teacher education also, teacher education institute. So it gives a complete understanding of earlier in under RMSA, the labs, ICT labs were given to the schools. But under SSA, primary schools will not have anything. So when they combined it, now it becomes a whole school complex where they can provide the facilities. And also there were several cyber safety guidelines launched during this year. 
and 2019 onwards, if you see, there was n number of initiative which has come inside. One is uh, in 2019 during the pandemic, it was Nishta, and after 2020, we had several initiative, which is the core initiative being implemented now. So that those initiatives we will be uh, going through in detail in the next session. But to see this whole timeline, it is for us to understand that we are not new to technology, nor technology is new to India. We have been progressing along with all the new things that is coming up, and we have been able to implement in the school. May not be 100 percentage, but we have been doing it in our school. So we have been part and parcel of all this, mm -hmm. and we will continue to be. So that is where it is very important to understand what policy says. When policy says something, it has to be, it comes into the national curriculum framework as suggestions and recommendations, and then it is implemented in terms of initiative. So we need to be aware of this structure. What are the major recommendations? I'm skipping two, three slides because JD will be surely speaking on that during the inaugural. So I'm skipping two slides because JD and Head will be speaking on it. So what are the recommendations of online and digital education in the policy document? I, we already told everyone to read 23 and 24 chapter. In Chapter number 24, you can see all these points have been elaborated in a very uh, deeper manner, but we'll just try to understand its relevance to this workshop, what we are doing as well. One of the recommendation is like it says, like we need to build a digital competency. That is Thank you, Dr. Inge. I just wanted to say the relevance of this session and this slide is for everyone who is present here in this workshop, online or offline. The people, uh, actually three individuals are there, three workshops are going on. One is for the autonomous body for uh, leveraging digital technology for school education. Another workshop is SRG training for e-content development, which is going on online, where uh, we are covering southern states, all the state resource groups. So they will also be trained in e-content development. And the workshop, which is organized by Dr. Amit Ranjan, who is a faculty in Department of ICT and Training, uh, is for uh, script development, and he has taken up English language, and uh, some uh, interesting topics of English class six, because we all know that we are into the uh, development of new textbooks as per uh, the new curriculum frameworks and as per NEP 2020. So uh, he is taking care of class six textbooks and this workshop is for uh, script development on some specific topics. So we uh, 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 all must know the context in which we are uh, working. We all are working because NEP is one of the context and uh, national curriculum frameworks is another context. And what initiatives are going on at national level are uh, also very important for us all to understand. That also sets a context for us uh, to work. E-content development is one of the very demanding areas that for quality content development. So uh, in uh, this particular slide, uh, the important concern where we all also have to play a role have been uh, uh, covered. So we can see so, here what are the important areas uh, of concern. Uh, pilot studies for online education need to be done because yes, online sir. education uh, has been a, a very important area of concern. We all learned how online education must take place, must go in the country during the time, a uh, toughest time which the entire world faced. And forcefully, we have to be in the um, uh, online domain to uh, uh, just take education forward during the pandemic time. 
So we need to have a sound research base also for uh, just consolidating how online learning should uh, take place and how online courses also need to be formed, uh, how flipped learning to be taken care of. And technology is not only important uh, during the uh, tough times, but it is part of our life uh, and it should also be part of the education uh, system. There are many benefits if you study uh, chapter 23 and uh, chapter 24, which Dr. Angel already mentioned of NEP 2020. So these chapters are dedicated to educational technology. So you all will learn uh, the context and uh, how we should uh, uh, just carry on in implementing uh, technology in education. So it is not, not technology is not an add on approach to be followed, but it should be an integral part of the education uh, system because we all are living in an era of uh, technology. Our children are also very, um, they are also technology pro. So uh, they are into technology more than us adults. So it should be taken up in a strategic manner in uh, education also. So pilot studies need to be done for online education. Then digital infrastructure is one of the very important concern because in our country, there is no uniform ICT infrastructure across uh, schools and across teacher education institutions. So that also needs to be taken care of. Uh, for developing ICT infra infrastructure, uh, electrification is also very important, which is a major concern in rural uh, parts of our country. And this has also been reflected in NEP 2020. Uh, they, it says that in past few decades, electrification has happened in a very rapid manner. So we need to uh, take care of developing ICT infrastructure also. Uniformity cannot be obtained uh, at any point of time. That differentiation will, uh, 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 is a, a part of life that we will have differentiated infrastructure, but some bare minimum infrastructure should be made available everywhere in the country, uh, especially in the educational institution. And that has also been reflected in uh, NEP 2020 that we must concentrate on developing digital infrastructure uh, as far as education is concerned. Then online teaching platforms and tools. Yes, uh, so uh, Uh, I was talking about online teaching platforms. So how online teaching platforms should um, uh, should be, that also need to be uh, addressed because uh, if we are taking up online education and um, now also one of the workshop is happening online. And as we all know that um, uh, India is a populous country, very large country as far as uh, uh, geography is concerned and as uh, far as its population is concerned. So we have surpassed uh, China as we all know in terms of uh, population. And so uh, is in case of teacher population and student population in our country. If I tell you the experience of NCF uh, 2005, because that time online education was not that much in a process in our country. So we were just orienting our teachers and teacher educator uh, through um, training, though we were adopting online mode also, uh, taking advantage of education satellite, which was there at that time.
participants from 16 states are uh, with us at this point of time. And they will be learning uh, uh, development of e-content uh, for various level of education. So this power of technology need to be harnessed and we should make our online portals and online apps more robust. Here we are using an online uh, a tool, conferencing tool uh, to take this training forward. But NISTA training, you all must be aware about. For that, and robust LMS is required. During the time of pandemic, we anyhow managed to leverage Diksha for carry that training forward. But Diksha at that point of time was not an LMS in true sense. But we realized that we need to have learning management systems, online learning management systems, and apps also so that we can uh, take forward our trainings in a more uh, concentrated manner, in a more uh, better manner. So that is why online teaching platforms and tools are also required, which is also reflected in uh, NEP 2020, as you can see in this slide as well. Then addressing a digital divide. We also need to address the digital divide, which emerged out of a digital infrastructure also because digital infrastructure is not uniform. That is one of the dimension of digital divide. Digital divide is multifarious. There are a lot more dimensions to a digital divide which exists in our country but it, it exists everywhere. It is not that it exists only in India. Sometimes this divide is also created because teachers are not well versed with online uh, teaching learning. They don't have that competency of ICT competencies or educational technology competencies to function in a better manner. So that is also one dimension of digital divide. And in our country, as we all know, uh, uh, more than 1,700 languages and dialects are spoken. But when it comes to the availability of uh, digital content, primarily digital contents are available in English language. So in a country like India, we have to take care of and address the last mile child also. So that is why there is a need to uh, developing digital content and making our platform competent enough to address this diversity also, linguistic diversity also. So online platforms also, their interface, uh, need to be in multiple languages. So now NCRT after NEP 2020, earlier also we were working in multiple languages, but now uh, we have strategically planned to have our content, our resources, at least in 22 languages, which are there listed in the eighth schedule of Indian constitution. And English is... At least we are having resources in 23 languages, but we are also having resources in languages as well. Uh, Diksha carries around um, uh, uh, digital content, digital resources in around uh, more, more than 90 languages as of now, where some uh, languages are foreign languages as well. So that is how we are proceeding, and that is uh, the uh, need of the R also, and it will also address the digital divide. So our geographical diversity also creates a digital divide because in the far flung areas which are geographically difficult, it is uh, sometimes it becomes a challenge to uh, have internet connectivity, have appropriate digital infrastructure. If digital infrastructure is there, but connectivity is uh, a challenge, then that infrastructure result will also not work. Hardware and software availability, availability of labs like this. So it will, will not serve our purpose. So these kinds of challenges create digital divide. If you 
study more about digital divide, you will learn many more facets of digital divide, how uh, it exists in our country and how it exists across the world. There is difference, but this digital divide is everywhere. So we need to address the uh, digital divide also. Mm -hmm. And for that, we in India, we are harnessing the potential of telecast and broadcast technology. Mm -hmm. So we all know now we have uh, uh, NCRT is running 12 channels, one each for uh, uh, each class uh, from 1 to 12 for disseminator, dissemination of educational uh, resources. Uh, like that, we are also um, harnessing the potential of uh, the, the radio technology, uh, which is there. Uh, we, we cater to around 400 uh, radio channels, uh, NCRT caters to, uh, so that uh, audio resources can be disseminated uh, through the potential of this broadcast technology, telecast and uh, broadcast technology. So uh, it, it, it is uh, one of the concerns which has been um, mentioned in NEP 2020 also that we need to harness the potential of every available infrastructure, be it portals and apps, be it online learning platform, uh, be it telecast and broadcast technology, but we need to addressed to the digital divide uh, with multi mode of delivering um, uh, education and educational uh, resources. Then content creation repository and uh, dissemination of resources, it is also another uh, concern. So we are here for content creation, the repository, national repository that we have uh, at present is Diksha. Uh, it, its uh, next version is in the process of making. We are trying to make it more robust, more user-friendly, and we are working in its UI and UX design, and we are also working uh, uh, towards having a robust uh, LMS on it. And uh, Dr. Angel, because she takes care of uh, the uh, training and our online courses, so she is an important a resource and contributor in just uh, uh, taking uh, the uh, LMS to a uh, proper shape, final shape. So we uh, just take care of the experiences that we have on various uh, LMS platforms and trying to incorporate those in uh, the LMS which we are uh, trying to make up for the action. Then assessment and examination has also come up as a very big uh, challenge uh, during the time of pandemic. Although we all were trying to uh, just uh, uh, keep education at go, but how to assess children so that learning loss is not there. When you are in face-to-face -face mode, you observe many things but how children are behaving in online platform and whether they are learning appropriately or not, uh, that we were not able to uh, uh, just take care of um, at that time. So we are in a concentrated manner working towards uh, the assessment and examination also, especially online assessment and examination. And we try out in our online training program uh, programs as well. How to make people learn so that learning loss is not there when we are in an online mode. So in our online uh, workshops, training programs, we take care that uh, all the people have 80, at least 80% 80 attendance, and we constantly uh, uh, make sure that they are attending the program and we have a uh, lots of hands-on activities also in online courses as well so that they actually learn. We give them assignments so that we can assess whether they have learned what we taught to them. So these are some of the very common uh, and obvious ways to uh, keep the participant in, uh, engaged and also disciplined when they are uh, attending online courses. So <clears throat> assessment and examination is one of uh, the important areas. Then building digital competencies. I just mentioned that because of digital competencies also, digital divide is uh, created. 
So uh, how to build digital competencies? We at national level are working towards it. So we started with uh, ICT curriculum uh, for students and teachers. And now uh, we are also um, uh, uh, taking up many more initiatives for uh, building digital competencies among teachers. And this workshop will also enhance your digital competencies. Uh, of all the uh, people who are attending, all the three groups who are attending uh, their uh, respective programs. Then content pedagogy and technology integration, it is also very important. We all assume that if we are uh, teachers who uh, have uh, professed or studies uh, a particular uh, subject, so we are masters of our subject that we uh, deal with. But mastery of subject doesn't suffice until and unless we are also able to communicate what we know. And when we are communicating to children, then comes the role of pedagogy. So we need to understand and practice pedagogy as well to communicate the content that we know in a better manner. So content pedagogy, and uh, since we are living in an uh, era of technology, so we need to know technology also. But knowing all three, content, pedagogy, and technology in isolation will not work for ICT implementation. We need to have a balance of content pedagogy and technology integration and we also need to understand which technology work well better so there are a lot of uh, technological solutions which are available we just we we, we shouldn't uh, practice technology just for the take, uh, sake of technology so if we understand our content pedagogy and technology in a better way, then only we will be able to maintain a balance. And that is what we all need to uh, do. Then blended models of learning also need, we, we need to come up with blended models of learning. In Pragyata guidelines, we have uh, proposed various models of learning, but that was in the context of a pandemic and in the context of differentiated infrastructure that we have. If this infrastructure is there, how which model will work? So we have come up with some models. You can go through Pragyata guidelines as well to understand those uh, models. Uh, but when we are into face-to-face -face mode also, so blended and flipped learning. Uh, need to be understood in a better manner to, to just save time and to make learning more engaging. So that is also one of the uh, highlights of uh, NEP 2020. Then CPD and uh, incentives for teachers, continuous professional development of teachers, and how this professional development need to be incentivized. Uh, that also need to be worked upon. If teachers are uh, doing uh, certain uh, trainings, so they how how they um, should be incentivized for uh, their professional development that they undergo over their career span. Then laying down standards. So we are working in various technologies for online courses, for e-content development, for e-content development of disabled children, but we need to set a standard for everything. If we are talking about portals and app, so we, we, we should make and show that how a standard portal and app should look like. So we need to set a standard for everything. And that is reflected in NEP 2020 everywhere that we need to set a standard. So Pragyata guidelines are an example of setting standard our e-content guidelines, e-content development guidelines developed by NCRT are also there to set an standard. And whatever in technology we are doing, we are trying to lay down standard also for that so that uh, we can show or tell people that it is the bare minimum uh, 
or maximum standard that need to be set for everything that we uh, plan to do. Mm -hmm. So you can take this session. Mm -hmm. I have completed this slide. So thank you very much. I just wanted to uh, make the context that this uh, particular presentation is relevant for all of you. And uh, yeah, so you can uh, take forward this session. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Actually, we are We will continue our session to understand the digital initiatives. So ma'am has very clearly said, so I have not introduced ma'am because we were just waiting for starting. Ma'am is Professor Endo Kumar. She is heading the Department of ICT and Training Division under which this whole program is happening. Uh, so we were about to welcome and have it a formal okay. The first time we are holding training for our all together. together. Yes. So once again, I take this time to welcome everyone for uh, the inaugural of these three programs together. And uh, we have with us uh, Professor Amrinder Bairav, Joint Director of CIT and CRT, on behalf of all the participants and all the three group trainings. Uh, I welcome uh, Professor Amrinder Bairav for the inaugural. And I take this time to welcome Professor Rendra Kumar, heading the Department of ICT, uh, under with the department where this all the three programs are happening today. So welcome, ma'am. Uh, I also take time to welcome Professor, sorry, Dr. Ramit Ranjan, who is Assistant Professor in Department of ICT, also coordinating the, the workshop on developing uh, each and then for class six English. Uh, welcome, sir. And I take this time to welcome each and every participant 
50 participants from uh, atomic energy uh, schools and uh, also um, uh, nearly 400 plus participants who are online um, who is also attending the e-content development workshop for uh, SRGs uh, from uh, all the southern states and uh, also the participants who are here as resource person to develop the scripts for English uh, class six. I take this time to welcome the participants of all the three programs and also the organizing team members of all the three workshops. So welcome to everyone. Um, as we all are aware that these three programs are happening together, but it is having the same uh, goal of enhancing like leveraging digital technology. In the script workshops, they are going to prepare the uh, scripts for developing digital content that can be disseminated. And there is a group of um, resource persons who are going to be trained on development of e-content in the workshop for SRGs and in for the atomic energy schools uh, teachers, it is also going to be not just the e-content development. You're also going to learn a little more on how it can be implemented and all the initiatives can be leveraged in the um, atomic energy schools itself. So these are the goals of these three programs with this uh, objective. Uh, we are starting the three programs today. And uh, this time, right now, I invite Professor Indra Kumar to give the opening remarks. Uh, yes. Screenshots, we will give the videos on the world. Uh, Professor Amrendra Behra, Joint Director CIET, so, who is heading all the uh, work and initiatives that we are taking care of. I just mentioned, Dr. Angel mentioned about policy perspective for ET and ICT, and I have uh, just mentioned what is reflected in NEP 2020 as far as technology implementation is concerned. So whatever we are doing at national level, it's uh, being done in his able guidance. Uh, I also like to welcome Dr. Amit Ranjan, who is a faculty of English uh, language in the Department of ICT and Training, and also uh, esteemed my esteemed colleague, Dr. Angel, who is an assistant professor. And she takes care of most of the training programs that uh, we uh, do. Uh, so, uh, I welcome you all, and as far as the introduction of all these three programs are concerned, Dr. Angel has already uh, mentioned uh, the purpose. So, this time, uh, I, I will talk about the English language workshop first. So, he has given a very creative uh, title also to the workshop, Dr. Amit Ranjan. Two clause, T-W-O-2, C-L-A-W-S clause. And two close, T O O two, C L O S E close. So such words are similar sounding words. So he is uh, developing a series on uh, similar sounding words. So uh, that also enhances our pronunciation also and also the understanding of similar sounding word words. So this will be a very interesting series, I believe. And the participants, um, resource persons of uh, Dr. Amit Ranjan, who are present over here, I believe that they will make this workshop a successful one by creating creative scripts for the concepts that uh, uh, he had envisaged in his mind. So I wish you all very successful workshop and very successful working on the screen. And another workshop that is happening here is uh, for uh, the autonomous bodies, leveraging digital technology for education, how to leverage digital technology you know, for education. And the context for leveraging technology is NEP 2020 and the NCFs that uh, we have in place. So here uh, you will be having a lot of uh, hands-on uh, experiences also on all the technology dimensions that we will be uh, covering uh, during these uh, 
days uh, when uh, Dr. Angel will be having a workshop with us. The another workshop which uh, we are having and around 400 participants uh, have joined us online is SRG training, the state resource group training. So this is a regular uh, practice of CIT and CERT to have these workshops. Uh, this year we had this workshops, uh, these workshops in two phases. Uh, one phase we did for uh, northern states and we had it in Hindi medium so that uh, because that is the preferred language for them. And now we are having this workshop for southern states and we will be having this workshop in the, the medium of instruction will be adopted. Um, it will be English because it is the preferred language for uh, southern states. The purpose is to convey the knowledge what, uh, in uh, whatever mode we uh, should convey. So in uh, these two workshops, especially which is uh, coordinated by Dr. Angel and the workshops for um, um, e-content e development, we will be covering a lot of uh, uh, different formats and variety of e-content, like how uh, best audios can be developed and edited, how videos can be developed, how animations, graphic resources, uh, simulations need to be um, developed. And every time, because technology is dynamic, it is not static. Uh, every, uh, every year or every month and in a decade, technology changes drastically. So we also need to um, uh, make our uh, training programs also um, yeah, dynamic so that nuances and new developments in technologies also need to be incorporated in whatever tech, uh, training we are adopting. So this time we have taken up some uh, newer technologies also when it uh, uh, comes to the development of e-content. We will also be having, which we are having this time, a new session on uh, harnessing the potential of uh, artificial in intelligence for e-content development. So when artificial intelligence and real intelligence uh, mixes, mm -hmm. we combine them, we can uh, de develop best pieces of digital content. Because we should not only depend on ICT, uh, the, the AI, artificial intelligence, IT, artificial intelligence need to be when we develop content uh, with the use of AI. So we have to give appropriate prompt to come up with appropriate and desirable content. So you will also be learning art of prompting, how to give prompt to an AI tool to come up with best content that we want to have. With the use of AI, we can develop scripts also. So maybe Dr. Amit Ranjan's uh, participants can also try this and uh, they, they, they should attend this session uh, of um, uh, AI for the content development. So it will be helpful for them. So we can uh, just uh, uh, cross, uh, uh, do this uh, cross exchange of knowledge also when three workshops are going on simultaneously. I'll share the link, link is already shared with you. So I'll tell you when this session is happening. Uh, so this is the new session and we are also uh, be having a session on how to develop the script and resources for um, uh, XR, AR and VR resources. Uh, apart from this, cyber safety and security is one of the major concern that we have when we are in the cyber uh, world. So the session on cyber safety and security will also happen in the in, uh, training programs. So these are some of the highlights of the training programs that uh, we are having and content development uh, workshops that we are having. So you won't be listening. This is the first session. So we are building the context. That is why you are listening. But during the course of workshop, you will be having a lot of hands-on experiences where you will be trying your hands in e-content development. And I'm uh, very sure that you all must, uh, uh, will learn, not must learn, you all will learn something uh, new out of these uh, trainings. And uh, I believe uh, during the valedictory closing of this uh, workshop, uh, I'm sure that I will hear from you that 
you have learned a lot. If I won't here, then we will evaluate ourselves to just change our modus operandi for carrying out these programs. But I'm very sure, very confident that you all will learn uh, many new things uh, during uh, these uh, three uh, workshops and uh, training programs. So with this, I will uh, leave everything else to be unfold during these days. So I will stop here. Uh, and thank you all for joining and thank all your deputy authorities for uh, deputing you here for these workshops. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, over to... Uh, uh, Dr. Angel to uh, take forward the proceeding of this inaugural session. Dr. Angel. I will speak from you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thanks for giving the brief. That's not good. Thank you so much, ma'am, for giving the brief of all the three programs and the uh, uh, objective of this program and in what school we are doing this. Thank you so much. And now I invite Professor Amarinder Behra, joint director, department, sorry, CIT and CRT to address all the participants. Thank you very much, Dr. Anjit. Uh, really good morning. Namaskar to all of you. Uh, those who are online, can they hear me? Can anyone raise your hand that you can hear me? Good, great. Thank you. Uh, my esteemed colleagues from CIT, Professor uh, Indu Kumar, who heads the Department of ICT in CIT. My other two colleagues uh, from CIT who are the coordinator of the program, Dr. Uh, Angel Ratnabai, uh, who is uh, coordinating the program on leveraging technology for teaching, learning, and assessment, particularly the educational technology orientation program. And uh, my other colleague from CIT, Dr. Amit Ranjan, who is coordinating another program uh, particularly on development of uh, English language learning contents. And uh, the participants who are nearly 400, uh, who have joined from different states and unit territories for the five days orientation program on the content development, which is coordinated by Professor Indu Kumarji and uh, her team members. And uh, my uh, col other colleagues, including the project lead staff uh, from CIT who are working on Diksha, Nista, and uh, PME Vidya and other related uh, projects. Distinguished colleagues from uh, particularly Atomic Energy Education Society schools and uh, school teachers, diet faculty and the SCRT faculty from different states and duties and distinguished colleagues those who have joined for, for the script writing workshop. So I take this opportunity to welcome all of you to this five days program, though there are three different titles, but we are having the uh, inaugural session together so that we can save time and you can concentrate more on academics rather than on uh, inaugural and uh, valedictory events. And uh, uh, Professor Indu Kumarji has already um, set uh, the program by introducing the policy direction. Couple of things I would like to bring before you as far as the policy NEP 2020 direction is concerned. And I also would be requesting all of you, so you have five days here in CIET, and those who are, have joined online also, uh, please do read the NEP 2020. It is a 65-66 page document. But once, twice, thrice, reading is not sufficient. If you have to digest it, so maybe 50 times you have to read. So then only the words and the meaning and what we bring teachers and teacher educators to do uh, to implement the policy in letter and spirit can be achieved. So please do read and I also request both the program coordinators here, Dr. Angel and Dr. Amit, uh, 
uh, to please provide a hard copy of the uh, document of NEP 2020, um, whether it is English or Hindi, depending on their needs, or both the copies, if they can carry back to the schools also, it will be good. So please make copies and provide them. And those who are online, you will be getting certainly soft copies in the group created already for all of you so that you can read and make copies of these documents and keep it, keep it with you, I request. So like we are from different religious groups, so like we worship some of the religious documents like Bible, Quran, Gita. So for education, fraternity, maternity, whoever connected, we need to read policy as well to digest and implement. And uh, as a part of the policy implementation, there are two national curriculum frameworks. Uh, the first national curriculum framework is for foundational stage, which was brought out in 2022. And uh, uh, that is also in place and it is available in our sales counter also. Those who find time in between nine to four, I would like to have a copy with you, which is a 300 page document and uh, uh, it uh, needs time also to digest. So, and the national curriculum framework for school education is a 600 page document. And uh, uh, that is not at, uh, available as a hard copy, but soft copies are available. We need to bring teachers and teacher educators to go through. And uh, the summary uh, I would like to recollect for all of you, many of you might have read through the reputation for you also. The policy has a vision for providing equitable quality education and lifelong learning that to rooted in Indian culture and ethos. So we need to take into consideration the policy implementation. It is also the sustainable development goal for it has also the similar vision to achieve this by 2030. The policy NEP 2020 talks about achieving it some aspects by 2027. But uh, the SDG goal says by 2030, we need to uh, achieve this. So um, let us join together for that. And also while talking about curriculum and the curricular practices, if you read the heading chapter four, in NEP 2020, it talks about having a, a system where education is holistic. So we need to provide a holistic education to our every child and India is second to none as far as the scale is concerned. So we have 15 lakh schools in the system, nearly 90 lakh teachers in the system and 26 crore children in the system. So the scale is very huge, even one of the biggest system of education in the world. China is having nearly six crore schools, uh, six lakh schools. Uh, so rather we have 15 lakh schools uh, in the system. So therefore we need to take care of that. Maybe we are representing a small system, but there is a bigger system in place. And uh, also while the policy talks about curriculum, it talks about we need to have a, a holistic curriculum and uh, which is integrated also, engaging also, enjoyable also. And I don't feel that uh, every one of us, given the diversity we have in our classrooms, if there are 35 or 25 or 50 children in the class, so the diversity is very huge for us, intra-individual and inter-individual. Even the identical twins, they differ in their learning styles. And uh, if we talk about uh, the ways they learn, so there are thousands of ways children learn, learn through demonstration, uh, discussion, even through uh, imitation, anukaran or hanukaran se bhi So uh, we need to provide appropriate inputs for them to learn. And I strongly feel that given the differences we have in our classroom, we also have differences in teachers. So no two teachers can be equated, they can be compared. So there are many strength and many um, limitations, weaknesses in us also. But I strongly feel that technology can bail us out. If we have some limitation, I am a science teacher, so not equipped with a good lab in my school. So definitely with a virtual lab, I can introduce uh, my children. If dissection of frog is banned in my classroom, I can show them a virtual dissection till they get a dead frog, frog to dissect. 
so uh, that also could be done there are many hazardous chemicals also so children knowingly or unknowingly they spill it uh, on their body parts so it can burn their body parts also and uh, uh, the dress also and it can be injurious to them so can they practice with some virtual reality content and uh, practice is thrice four times five times and then they are allowed to work in the lab so they are the precision which they do any uh, lab experiment could be better rather than a child novice uh, given all the um, equipments to perform an experiment with hazardous chemicals and all there are many chemicals in the classroom we keep in the lab so once you use second time it cannot be so like uh, some uh, even spirit also if you open the, so uh, the next few seconds it is uh, nothing is there so could be there could be many such uh, thing also so in that case that there are digital resources we can bell us out and have a uh, engaging classroom with the resources integrated with human intervention so uh, therefore the policy while talking about use and integration of technology madam indu also explained it talks about pathan pathan or mulyankan teaching learning and assessment so technology needs to be used so that a lot of time is also saved for interaction if we use technology so uh, even uh, linguistically we are so diverse in this uh, uh, there are nearly uh, classroom 60 plus people uh, sitting here so maybe uh, a dozen languages are represented like my mother tongue odia so maybe mukherjee das uh, mother tongue bangla so somebody else uh, something else so dr angels mother tongue uh, tamil and uh, dr amit's mother tongue um, uh, hindi so professor indus mother tongue hindi so maybe there are many mother tongues represented and uh, now um, even sachin tendulkar has scored more than 50 centuries uh, but we have not uh, century uh, crossed uh, in our classrooms as far as languages are concerned but technology is there which can help us to develop content in multiple languages using ai ml so artificial intelligence and machine learning even for the first time in the history of ncert last year we have come out our department of ict has come out with ncert textbooks into 23 languages including english so there are 23 languages included in the schedule eight of our constitution even i could see the participants are from northeastern states also from manipur assam and all so uh, even uh, uh, they could uh, find contents in their own mother tongue and if not technology can help us also for doing that even anuvadini and vasini are the some of the ai tools which help us to uh, do that also so should we use technology so that if there are multilingual Uh, children in my class so i can address their needs because the policy talks about using bilingualism and multilingualism label based from nursery to tertiary so from nursery to phd the policy says that medium of instruction should be in mother tongue and because the uh, researchers have proved that if the children at least up to class uh, grade 5 they study in the mother tongue so no body can challenge them at uh, um, uh, cognitive level even they do better in uh, scholastics so uh, it the researches are proved uh, so therefore uh, how we can use technology so that the huge linguistic diversity we have in our country with 1700 plus languages spoken in our country and five distinct language families aryan dravidian austroasiatic tibeto burman and andamanese language family so we can uh, develop resources in these languages and use in our classroom beyond the classroom as well the policy talks about teacher preparation both at pre service and in service level we have 90 lakh teachers in the system rather 94 lakh around latest udice data uh, gives uh, the detail that there are 94 lakh teachers in our country so if we have to train them in a time bound manner policy says 50 hours mandatory training for every teacher on future skills 
are required. So whether it is toy-based pedagogy, game-based pedagogy, experiential learning, ICT, cyber safety, security, virtual labs, virtual reality content. So it could be anything. It could be bilingualism and multilingualism also. So uh, how to address uh, children in the classroom. So uh, uh, if so many uh, things are to be done and we have to uh, do, so we need to use uh, technology as well. And we need to reach out 94 lakh teachers per annum. So without technology, it is not possible. We consider this fifth, this is the fifth group or sixth group? <laughs> sixth group of uh, teachers we are training. So name maybe nearly 300 uh, teachers we have trained. So it is a drop in the ocean. If, where is 94 lakh and where are 200, 300? So, and if we say that uh, we are going to uh, train the subsequent level of teachers in cascade mode, so uh, it is also extremely difficult that there are many concepts while adopting cascade mode of training, a multi tier training mechanism, so a lot of communication gap there. So uh, because if some concept is taught in some way, so it may go to uh, some level in a different way. And uh, maybe the um, core meaning may uh, might have been lost. So uh, it uh, is possible. So therefore, technology can bail us out and 94 lakh teachers simultaneously could be trained. Like we have 400 people joined online uh, with us. So it could be 94 lakh teachers joining together also. And if uh, uh, a resource person is addressing directly to them, so it can reach out to them. But again, the linguistic diversity is also there. So is the resource person well versed in all our languages? so that they matter also a lot. So uh, then we have to think in uh, different ways. So how to do it. And uh, when we talk about the fourth thing the policy is talking about uh, is the debanked children. It is said that in our country or any population when we draw a normal probability curve, so uh, we find that uh, how many people are coming uh, where. So similarly, uh, it is said, that three to seven percent of any population, uh, particularly in India, uh, are the bank. So in that case, there are 21 different variety of the bank uh, children uh, in our system. So starting from visually challenged to hearing impaired to Parkinson uh, to autistic. So you might have seen Tare Jamin for Hitchki or Wobi Ekavalvi the Kaoga Sayada Plogone. So how they have addressed and we are addressing such children every day in our classroom. Can assistive technologies help us, bail us out in a better manner that uh, through tactile audio, tactile resources. So if currency notes are talked in the classroom, we have actual currency notes to uh, feel and touch for a visually challenged child and see that which corner it is uh, a perforated uh, design. So by touching that a visually challenged child can tell the denomination of that particular currency note, whether 500, 100, 2000, 20 rupees or whatever. So uh, can be uh, said. And just, uh, we also using assistive technologies, we address their concerns because they have equal rights as far as their rights are concerned. And the RPWD 2016 Act also ensures uh, um, as a policy document uh, legal frame, that these children are also, they need to have equitable quality education at par with other children as well. So how as a teacher, as a teacher educator, if I have a differently abled child in my class, how to address their concerns through use and integration of technology is a million dollar question. Last, last not least, we bring teachers and teacher educator a lot of time we spend on educational administration, including assessment also. So can we have some smart ways of assessing children performance and maintaining records of children. Uh, you might be finding time in CIT to visit to the Vidya Samiksha Kendra we have in CIT. CIT is having five studios and uh, uh, two virtual labs, one experiential learning lab. And uh, uh, also there are live studios and uh, uh, also we have uh, the education data center. So by sitting here also, 
uh, we can see that uh, which project is getting implemented in what manner. And uh, in this type, uh, uh, EMR, uh, the um, uh, Atomic Energy Education Society is having a number of particular number of schools and teachers, whether the all school teachers are trained uh, for 50 hours mandatory training or not. So by sitting here in Delhi also time will come that we can judge that. We have so far integrated 20 state data uh, so that um, maybe uh, by lunch time we can say see that uh, how many children have attended the school. So if they have attended or the teachers are there to attend them or not. And uh, they are using labs or not, midday meals are solved or not. And if it is done, so whether it has contributed to attendance of children in the classroom or not learning announcement of learning performance by ch um, uh, all the children or not. So technology is there, technology can help us, but sometimes technology also overpowers us if we don't smartly use. Because today uh, the cyber safety and security is a major concern. So though all of us, we are using smartphones, but there are cyber uh, criminals who by hook or crook uh, some way, they're uh, committing a uh, lot of crimes and knowingly and unknowingly we are becoming victims of these uh, um, um, people. And uh, also we need to equip ourselves so that we smartly use whatever we are doing. So the resources which have been designed for particularly for both the orientation programs, people, those who have joined online for the e-content development and for this uh, leveraging technology for um, the education purposes, the group will be addressing these uh, concepts in the uh, these sessions also. So I request all of you to uh, enjoy the session and uh, do the uh, post-session work and uh, successfully complete this course and become part of our whole tribe to dis disseminate this particular uh, particular uh, theme and experience to other colleagues, peer teachers and students and make a difference in the classroom. So first of all, I thank all of you for sparing your valuable time and uh, coming to NCRT with your uh, uh, going beyond your comfort level uh, because definitely in your place you are uh, having different kind of comfort you might not be having that in our guest rooms, even this hall and other places. Uh, but definitely we assure that like Professor Indra Kumarji said, that uh, learning is the first and the foremost as far as the academic community is concerned. So we will ensure that uh, a, a healthy uh, learning atmosphere is created and we take back uh, major uh, concepts, understanding, in a better manner and implement it in a right sense and in a way achieving the NEP 2020 goals uh, in real spirit. Uh, so thank you very much once again to all of you, those who have joined online and uh, all of you, those who have uh, connected to us offline also in this hall. So uh, happy learning to all of you uh, and uh, best wishes for all uh, your remaining sessions in these five days. And the best wishes to the e-content development team also uh, for script development and content development. And all our these resources are available on our 15 different uh, platforms because we maintain 15 websites, including Diksha, PME Vidya, and Nista. Uh, even Prasast is also, and there are a dozen of mobile app also NCRT maintains, and we have nearly 200 TV channels across the country being implemented. NCRT is running 14 TV channels. And it is an open invitation for the Atomic Energy family uh, teachers to come uh, forward for becoming a TV teacher and teaching not only your uh, schools, but also uh, teaching to the whole India and the other world uh, through our TV, radio, and uh, other platforms. And we also are broadcasting our contents through 400 radio stations. So uh, whenever you will be uh, moving to our TV and radio studio, you'll be finding the glimpses of production. I know during COVID pandemic time, you might have uh, been into uh, so much of online learning, but whatever we do, we have a professional standard. Uh, mobile recording qualities are not accepted for telecast. 
because there is a lot of fidelity during transmission. So therefore, we maintain a quality. So when you visit the studio and all, uh, that also will be known to you. So best wishes uh, to every one of you for joining us uh, for these five days. Uh, thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, giving the base for uh, based on the NEP and uh, putting the strategies ahead. And uh, we are sure that all the participants will be uh, carrying it forward certain things from here which they can implement. Thank you so much. I invite uh, Dr. Amit Ranjan to give the thanks. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Angel. Um, Professor Amrit uh, Behra, Joint Director. Um, I had the ICT Professor Indu Kumar, um, um, Dr. Rajesh, who's just joined us, um, Dr. Angel. Um, thanks a lot um, for all the very informative um, and useful insights um, that you gave us. Dr. Angel has been um, running the Vishta program for uh, several years now, and she has persevered with um, training both online, offline, inside Delhi, outside Delhi. It's um, amazing perseverance and across um, disciplines. So she also, she um, uses the services of all of us, me for English, somebody for different subjects. So it's different kinds of resources um, um, that come together for um, these amazing um, uh, training sessions um, that are conducted um, uh, across the country. Um, so thanks a lot, Dr. Angel. Um, Dr. Indu um, uh, Kumar spoke about um, uh, the different activities um, that we um, carry at the um, Department of um, ICT, and there, there are three trainings uh, going on simultaneously. Um, the SRG training is um, um, very interesting because it um, increases the scale. Um, uh, currently, there are 400 participants uh, that are part of it. And it also includes um, various subjects in um, um, various phases. Um, we try to communicate um, the latest cutting edge technology and, and the latest discussion that is available to um, teachers and resource persons um, um, across the country. And Dr. Indus um, successfully um, um, organized this for uh, several years. Thanks a lot, Nam. Um, uh, Joint Director Professor Behra raised a uh, um, lot of uh, issues that we are working with um, and also how we need to be careful about um, the way IT is uh, working and um, how we need to control it and not be controlled by it in the coming times. We at CIT are trying to um, scale up given uh, the daunting task of reaching out to um, a, a population of billion plus. And so um, how important it is um, to use technology, um, to leverage technology to reach, in, um, to reach out. Like you said, it's a drop in the ocean. We communicate with just um, um, 100 people at a time. So how we can use AI to reach there. Um, and at the same time, we are also very careful about inclusivity. Um, we, um, our videos um, have uh, ISL um, signings along with most of our videos, our recordings have. We are um, very particular about being inclusive um, um, to all uh, uh, categories of um, um, the young people as well as whatever the needs are as, as dynamically we uh, progress. So there are lots of other issues that we've heard about, but uh, basically the whole idea is how to um, uh, think through technology in our times to increase the scale and at the same time be in control of it and not be controlled by it. Thanks a lot, um, 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 Joint Director, sir, for that. And uh, thanks a lot to participants for uh, um, coming here from your busy schedules and spending a week with us and collaborating and participating with us. So thanks a lot. Yeah, having a 15 minutes break, a quick break tea is outside for the participants of uh, Atomic Energy Schools. You can have the tea outside. 
And for the e-content team, the day will be served just outside your room radio workshop. Is, so you can just join for the tea there. And we will be continuing with the session here after the tea. So you can just quickly come back. Washrooms are there at the entrance, like near to the steps, where there is male and female washroom on the side as well. So you can use them. Or online team, you can take uh, 10, 15 minutes, 15 minutes break, and you can join back. Thank <laughs> you.